Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and today I've got a swan in a basket, uh, in a skep, to be precise, right here. The skep is uh, tied up with a sheet, or a bit of a sheet, and uh, the top is secured with a bit of fencing wire, because that's what I had handy. And uh, this swarm was caught this afternoon, uh, taken from a, a, a tree, a vertical surface on a, on a tree, which is... Uh, a little bit tricky to get get to but we managed it and here they are in a skep and I'm going to put them into a top bar hive which is right here in front of me as you can see looking into the top bar hive the floor is uh, an eco floor it's uh, prepared with um, wood shavings and sawdust and bits of birch bark uh, which is a recent addition to my eco floor and there is a uh, sawn off plastic uh, container here with sugar uh, which I've dampened thoroughly it's uh, it's not um, liquid enough to be called a, a syrup it's it's more like a fondant really it's almost solid and that's just going to keep them uh, give them something to do for uh, a few hours it's now about seven o'clock in the evening um, as you can see the sun's uh, getting low over there and uh, it's quite late to be hiving a swarm, but I want to get them into this hive this evening so that they can orientate themselves tomorrow. I don't want to leave them in the car overnight because it's going to warm up quite quickly in the morning, I think. I'd rather they were in the hive now, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm getting bees from a skep into a top bar hive is a very simple matter. It is really just a question of... Um, removing the, the sheet and tipping them in. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. If I lift the, the skep towards the camera, you'll be able to see that uh, most of the bees, you can see this, most of the bees are in the basket. Uh, there's another bunch on the uh, sheet here, which I'm going to tip in, of course. We're just going to And then I'm just going to tip the rest in. They're all milling around in there. So I'm quite quickly going to get top bars over them. Ouch. Get top bars over them quickly so they don't all try to escape. I uh, didn't quite show you this, but I have actually closed the, the proper entrance to the hive. I'm just going to go around and show you that now. There's the entrance over there, uh, which is closed by twists of grass. The eco floor um, guttering stuff is not a perfect fit on this hive. So there will be some sort of, uh, probably some unofficial entrances here and there, but I think we can, uh, we can tolerate that. The only thing left to do now is to retrieve my phone from the bottom of the hive and I'm going to close up the top, put some insulation over the top of the bars like so, and then I'm going to close the lid Right, so the bees are, most of the bees are inside the hive, which is obviously where we want them. I'm just going to take one entrance plug out to allow the, the stray bees to find their way in. There we go. So now flying bees will be able to find that uh, entrance hole. There's, yeah, that guttering definitely needs some adjustment. Um, but because there's food in there already, and because I've set the hive up uh, as far as possible to be comfortable for bees, I'm hoping that they're going to stay put.
figured out the uh, position of the entrance and they've got food inside. I'm hoping that they are going to just settle in and start building comb on the top bars. That's what we hope, that's the intention and we shall see. So I'll come back and check that tomorrow and if necessary I can open another entrance hole um, but the bees that are in the air seem to have found the entrance okay and they're just uh, doing a little bit of orientation so I'm quite happy about that good stuff job done